and welcome to our third seminar for this year. And we are so pleased to have you once again with us. Let me give you the instructions of the use of the Zoom. Remember that it is important that unless the presenter or the speaker ask you to open your mics, everyone should have it off. That would avoid that we will have background noises uh, that will interrupt the presentation. So please, please keep the mic off. With that said, we I want to share this quote that says, most of the successful people I have known are the ones who do more listening than talking. That comes from Bernard Barrow, uh, a financial and president of advisor, uh, advisor in finance. So that's why the English Department Coordinating Committee which is confirmed by our colleagues, Marisol Ortega, Victor Lopez, Versus Bishop, Sudi Palacio, Joel Alvarez, and Veronica D. Ford, with the support of the Extension and Continuing Coordinator, Education Coordination, Professor Florencio Diaz, who is the director, and Erika Santimeteo, who is the administrative coordinator of the College of Humanities from Universidad de Panama, has the honor to make the formal opening of our third seminar 2023 in the online modality with the title, Improving Listening Skills in English Language Teaching. And to begin with, we are going to have both the introductory words by Professor Marisol Ortega, coordinator of the Long-Term Education Committee of the English Department of the College of Humanities from Universidad de Panama. And she will also do the religious invocation. So Professor Marisol. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh... This is our third seminar, and I am glad you're all here, eager to learn. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Professor Olmedo Garcia. Uh, the authorities uh, that are present, Professor Olmedo Garcia, uh, Garcia Professor uh, Adrian Jimenez, head of the English School, uh, Professor Florencio Diaz of the Extension and Continuing Education Coordination, and of course, Mrs. Adi Kiel Santimateo, Administrative Coordinator of the Long-Term Education Community of the School of Humanities. And a good, a special good afternoon to our luxury speaker, Professor Dr. Joanne Ribbing. Thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you to all of the participants. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this seminar, Improving Listening Skills in English Language Teaching. It is wonderful to see that you are eager to learn. And there have been some of you that have followed us during the three seminars and are going to continue with the last one that is going to be in August. Thank you for being here. And also, I would like to thank the uh, organizing committee of the English department to all of the members, Professor Veronica Port, Professor uh, Belkis Bishop, Professor Hoel, Alvarez, Professor Suri Palacios, and Professor Victor Lopez. Thank you for all your support and for helping us to accomplish everything that we have to do to put up a seminar. Uh, there is a proverb by Bernard Howard that says, always walk through life as if you have something new to learn and you will. So remember that today, search for everything new that you have to learn. And before we start, I would like to say a few words of prayer. 
because I believe that God is always helping us. So let's pray. Uh, Father God, we commit this seminar to you. We ask you, Lord, to enlighten the eyes of our mind and our understanding during, during all of these days. May your wisdom be with us so that we will be able to assimilate all the knowledge you have in store for us. Give us the strength, the health, the intelligence, and the abilities to reproduce and put into practice everything we learn. Uh, we also commit Professor Rubin to you. We ask you to guide her in everything she does. Take control of every single detail. We thank you, Lord, for being with us during this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we are we are going back to Veronica now. Thank you, Professor Marisol, for those greeting words and the invocation. So we'll continue and we'll call Dr. Olmedo Garcia, who is the Dean of the College of Humanities. And he will give, you, give us some greeting words for this seminar. Professor Olmedo Garcia. Yeah. Buenas tardes a todas. Buenas tardes. A todas y a todos. Eh, en primer lugar, quisiéramos expresarle el saludo a nuestros directores y directoras, la profesora Gloria Jo, al profesor Adrián Jiménez, a la profesora Marisol Ortega, que es la coordinadora de educación continua en el departamento de inglés, al equipo que la acompaña, de nuestros agradecimientos por fortalecer la política de educación continua. Igualmente a la Dirección de, educa de Educación Continua del, de la Facultad del profesor Florencio Díaz, que ha puesto a disposición del Departamento de Inglés el equipo de apoyo a este proceso de la política de extensión y de capacitación. Indudablemente que hoy día todos los procesos y herramientas pedagógicas al servicio de la transformación de los procesos cognitivos eh, son los que nos están permitiendo hacer las transformaciones de entender que la pedagogía era un proceso determinado, un momento de, de la vida o de la historia. Pero a 30 años de seguir desarrollando este mismo eh, pedagogía, creo que nosotros hemos dado un salto importante con el apoyo de la tecnología, haciendo la diferencia y la salvedad que la tecnología es una herramienta y el proceso pedagógico es un proceso epistemológico de producción de conocimiento. Así que la tecnología es una herramienta para potenciar la velocidad del conocimiento, que es lo que hoy eh, vamos a discutir en el seminario de inglés. O sea, cómo eh, podemos diseñar procesos metacognitivos en este proceso pedagógico de la enseñanza del inglés para fa facilitar mejores comprensión, mejor reinterpretación de los estudiantes. El docente se convierte en esa herramienta. No es la magia de construir este proceso. Por eso también quisiéramos celebrar la presencia de nuestra facilitadora, la profesora Joan Rubín, que nos acompaña esta tarde, invitada por el Departamento de Inglés y la Coordinación de Educación Continua, a los compañeros y compañeras de, de, que están participando en este seminario. Creo que la Universidad de Panamá eh, hoy sigue dando eh, esa milla extra que significa que la educación es para la vida, para toda la vida y a lo largo de la vida. La capacitación la necesitamos. Nosotros hoy estamos desafiando esa educación crítica, esa educación constructiva, esa educación que es creativa, creativa, imaginativa. Pero tenemos otras herramientas que también producen 
información y algunos le llaman conocimiento, como son el Big Data y la inteligencia artificial. Nosotros, la humanidad, tiene que eh, convivir con estos procesos de cambio tecnológico, de innovación, y nosotros no podemos tener un prejuicio frente a estos cambios, porque eso crea una deuda social o las grandes brechas tecnológicas que existen en el mundo, que se agravó como consecuencia de una de las pandemias más horribles que vivimos. Por eso que es importante que este seminario de educación continua, con una formación extracurricular, podemos discutir durante los cinco días el tema de la, los procesos de metacognición, que es un proceso que acompaña a la construcción y el diseño de un proceso de conocimiento. La metaconexión es un proceso de conocimiento, sea en, en la enseñanza de un idioma o sea en la enseñanza de una ciencia en particular, en el caso nuestro, de las humanidades. Y qué bien que hoy le dediquemos ese espacio a este proceso a través de cualquiera de las modalidades, semipresencial, presencial, virtual, utilizando cualquiera de las plataformas que hemos aprendido a lo largo de estos últimos años. Y qué bien que nos den la oportunidad que la profesora facilitadora invitada, la profesora Joan, nos pueda también acompañar. La universidad le da la oportunidad a todos los profesores, a los investigadores, a también a soñar que podemos tener los últimos desafíos, no solamente en Panamá, sino en el mundo. Nosotros quisiéramos entender cómo es que un algoritmo reproduce el conocimiento y más en estos procesos metodológicos o epistemológicos de la enseñanza de un idioma. ¿Cómo es que ese algoritmo hoy puede ser la base de, de la información que domina el mundo? Bueno, en realidad, de verdad, eh, nosotros queremos que tengamos una ciencia, una visión del conocimiento, y que el, la enseñanza del idioma forme parte de ese proceso intercultural de acumulación de conocimiento. El idioma no es algo distinto a la, a la ciencia. El idioma es parte de un lenguaje, de una lingüística. Reconstruye memoria, reconstruye verdades, reprodu, reproduce imaginación de la realidad. Y eso es lo que es la ciencia hoy. La ciencia es imaginación y creatividad. Por eso, quiero decirle que eh, justamente bajo los principios que nosotros hemos planteado de una ciencia intercultural, una ciencia solidaria, una ciencia más humana, más comprometida, más ética, más inclusiva, yo quiero decirle que estamos cumpliendo los objetivos de las humanidades. Gracias a todos ustedes por participar porque este aporte que ustedes hacen a la ciencia, a la facultad, sepan ustedes, por eso que nosotros nos reacreditamos con los estándares más altos, por eso que nosotros estamos en el 15% de las principales universidades de América Latina, justamente por esta política que estamos llevando a cabo. No importa que hoy somos 30 en este seminario, lo importante es atreverse a hacerlo, lo importante es atreverse a diseñar esta propuesta distinta, alternativa. Y eso es lo que han hecho. Sepan ustedes que nuestro decano, sus autoridades, la visión que nos hemos comprometido para los cinco próximos años en ese proceso de reacreditación, están puestos también en este diseño de esta propuesta curricular que ustedes van a debatir durante cinco, estos cinco años. A nombre de nuestras autoridades, a nombre de, de nuestros compañeros del Departamento de Inglés, le extendemos un reconocimiento y le damos la bienvenida a que puedan disfrutar, a que puedan darnos más oportunidades y a tener más esperanza. Los pueblos que construyen sobre conciencia crítica, imaginativa, son los pueblos que crean esperanza. Y nosotros, ese es el aporte y la granito de arena que tenemos en este, en este espacio de la educación superior, tratando 
de que no nos destruyan esta visión que con mucho esfuerzo hemos construido. Les digo a ustedes que sigan, que sigan capacitándose y formándose, que aquí está el camino y este es el único camino de la luz para tener compañeros y compañeras competentes en el mundo de los grandes desafíos de la humanidad. Gracias a todos y buenas tardes. Muchas gracias, profesor Olmedo, doctor Olmedo, por esas palabras de bienvenida. Y estamos seguros que esta capacitación va a ayudarnos a ser mejores docentes en pro de nuestros estudiantes, y no solamente de nuestros estudiantes, sino del departamento y de la facultad. Así que, thank you, um, Dr. Olmedo, for those uh, encouraging words to help us be and enhance our knowledge, not only in behalf of our students, but also uh, in behalf of our department and the College of Humanities. Okay, muchas gracias. Um, so we continue with Professor Adrian Jimenez, who is the director of the school of, of, of the English schools of the College of Humanities. Good afternoon, Dr. Olmedo Garcia, Dean of the College of Humanities at the University of Panama. I also want to mention Magister Leidiana Hills, the Vice Dean of the College of Humanities. Magister Gloria Ejo, Chairperson of the English Department. Dear professors, members of the Culture and Continuing Education, Professor Florencio Diaz, and Enrique Santi Mateo, special guests, friends. Thank you for being here. I want to thank God, God for giving us the opportunity of sharing this here as a family. And um, also, I would like to thank those members, those professors who have made this possible, Professor Marisol Ortega, Professor Veronica Ford, Professor Joel Alvarez, Professor Bessie Bishop, Professor Victor Lopez. Thank you. Uh, I realized that you have done an excellent job. This is our third seminar. Uh, this is a great, a lot of effort Thank you for giving your best. Also, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the speaker, Dr. Joan Rubin. Thank you for sharing with us your knowledge. I'm sure that you are going to be very happy here because this is an excellent audience. We are going to give our best to get the best of, of you to see if we can accomplish, as Dr. Romero said, the dreams of those who want to improve their English skills. And I think that listening is one of the most important skills. As our seminar uh, is pretended that is called, we have to focus on the listening skill, which is one of the uh, essential elements that we need. Improving listening skills in English language teaching. Sometimes uh, we see that our students know how to read, how to write, but they have problems in listening. And it's one of the main skills that they need to get jobs. So if we are able to help them to accomplish that goal, then uh, they will be able to succeed in life. As Veronica said, if, uh, if they are able to listen carefully and clearly, they will succeed. Also, as Professor Marisol Ortega mentioned, we, all, we are always learning something new. So I'm sure that this is going to be a great seminar Thank you for being here, sharing this third seminar. There is a lot of effort also on behalf of the professors, but it's, you are going to see that, that we are going to have a lot of groups. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy this outstanding seminar. Welcome. Thank you very much, Professor Adrian, for those welcoming words. And with that, we'll begin saying that we want to give a very, very special welcome and thanks to our speaker, Dr. John Rubin. We are sure she will make this seminar an outstanding one. She will share with us the topic, English language teaching strategies to raise the student's awareness of their listening process. Let's meet our presenter, Dr. John Robin Associates, 
is a researcher and teacher trainer in listening comprehension, learner self-management and learning strategies. She has conducted teacher training workshops worldwide in, including Mexico, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, Italy, Spain, France, uh, Sweden, and Egypt. Oops. He conducted two longitudinal experimental studies on listening comprehension for Spanish and Russian. He has uh, authored several books and articles on listening and learner self-management, including a review of second language listening comprehension research, language learner self-management, can strategy instruction improve listening comprehension with I. Thompson. English workshops, no, English works with S. McKay and A. Mason, Ma, no, Mansoor, a textbook and video for intermediate level students, how to be a more successful language learner with I. Thompson, Learner Strategies in Language learner, Learning, co-edited with A. Wenden, and the award-winning Language Learning Strategies video this program. So, Professor John, the room is yours. Very much, and hello to everyone. Uh, it's good to sort, see some of you. Please put your pictures on because I like smiling faces. Um, maybe I should start with a, I've been working, I should start with a saying, a Chinese proverb. The Chinese proverb says, and many of you may know it, teach, give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime. So what we're really about, I tell people, I can't teach you anything. I can't teach you anything if by that you mean taking the knowledge from my head and putting it in your. It's not possible because there's a filter. And the filter is what you're hearing. And a filter is based on what you know, what you're interested in, what your experiences are, what your goals are. All of that means that you don't necessarily hear what I say, you're, because you're not listening. You're not paying attention. I wanted to, I was trying to type it, but I can't see very well here. Uh, I wanted, this is the book, how to be a more successful language learner. And uh, it's still available on Amazon. Uh, it's one of our books, but it's one that you may find interesting. All right. Put me on the um, PowerPoint. One second. This is all new technology here. All right, there we go. Thank you. Okay, good. All right, so this is our topic for today. If this is not working, let me do it. Different computer. Yeah, right. This is, you know, that this is the University of Panama, in case anyone hadn't told you. And here is my Gmail, in case you want to ask some questions, either during the seminar or after. And then I have a web page. And some of the articles that we'll mention are, in fact, downloadable on my uh, web page. So uh, these are pieces of information. If you want me to repeat it, I can certainly do that. Okay? 
Oh, right and left. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I wanted to start by separating hearing from listening. Uh, we all, if we, if we are not impaired, uh, our hearing sounds all sorts of information, uh, which we may or may not have asked for. Uh, I'm in a, a workshop room and I hear sounds outside. I didn't ask for them. I, I'm not really paying too much attention, but that's what hearing is. It's, I didn't ask for them. It's involuntary. Nobody asked me to do it. And I didn't work at it at all. It's effortless. On the other hand, it's important to note that listening is focused. I can decide what I want to listen to, what's important to me, what makes sense. And it's a choice that I make. It's voluntary. And it is intentional. It's a choice. Uh, so it's not just, I, I can decide not to listen. How many times have people said, you're not listening to me? That's right. I've chosen not to. All right. Now, um, what we're going to do, and I'll need some technical help, is I'd like to divide you in groups of three. And I'd like you to take 10 minutes to answer these questions. And one of you, please take notes and report back to the whole group. Let me read the questions. What problems do you personally have when listening to English? All of you, I believe, are second language speakers of English. And try to think about what domain or settings in which you have these problems. In other words, is it, I have a fair amount of trouble Actually, here in Panama, I, I speak fairly fluent Spanish, and I have been in many countries, but people here speak very quickly. So for me, just about anywhere in Panama it is a place where I have trouble listening to Spanish. Uh, in particular, I have trouble on the television, especially some television programs in Spanish unless I have the background knowledge, and that's the only way I can figure them out. Who's there? What happened? Uh, what do I know about the news? And the only way I know that is because I may have gone online and watched the news either in English or in the newspaper. So those are, as I say, that's one domain that I know I have trouble with Spanish. Uh, and next question is, what percent, if any, of your class time, that is the class that you're teaching, do you devote to teaching listening? Listening has been called the neglected skill. When I started teaching, I taught English in Brazil. And I was taught at the University of Michigan that you teach speaking. We didn't teach listening. And yet listening is how you learn to speak. It comes before. You have to have some input before you can output. And listening is in, input, listening. And how do you teach it? Uh, and uh, do you teach uh, how to listen or do you just say, uh, do you just test them? Did you, you know, what, did you hear this? Did you hear that? What's the name of such and such? Okay, now I will turn this over to my techies who are dividing you into groups. Did you want to speak? Okay, how do we do this? Okay, I am going to divide. We are 24 people right now in the room, but five of us are not part, uh, are not going to be going to the picking room because we are the organizer and you and blah, blah. So we are forming five groups. Please. As soon as I touch the creating the rooms, you're going to receive a message saying, join room such and such. You only have to click on that and you will be in the room, okay? Once you get in the room, when everybody is together, you will have 10 minutes. Okay.
Can you hear me? Yes, tell me. Okay. The thing is, we failed to to share the questions with them. Is there a possibility we can get a screenshot and just send it to them through okay. the chat? Give me, a, give me a second. Give me can a you second. see the screen? Wait, 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 wait. Give me a second. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay, let me see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go in each room and join room one. I just send it. So are you going to do that? Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to I'm going to try and share it when I go in the room. Yeah. Okay, great. Because yeah. I'm like, she wants to go into different rooms. Okay, bye.
I've sent the questions through the chat room. Okay, I already share the information in the different groups. Professor Abdiel, do you need help to go to the breaking room? Yes, please, please. Okay, are you connecting um, um, to this room with a cell phone or on your computer? Okay, I used to connect it by computer, but now I have problem with my computer, so I'm from the, the, my, my iPhone. Okay, at the top of your computer, top left of your computer, you should see four dots. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. So I have uh -huh. to join so it there. Yeah. Exactly, click there, and that, that then you say accept, and you should go to your room. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oof. Everybody's in their room. Good. Yep. <laughs> we're getting better. Yeah, we're getting better. Okay, let, can can I stop the recording and then begin it? When oh, yes. yeah, okay, yeah, yes. Uh, we were conversing about the problem that question, the problem we have. A one of my uh co worker said that she has problem when uh, when speaking with native speakers that speak so fast. He also mentioned that she has problem when speaking only with people with uh countries with strong accent also. Okay, okay. Uh, more. Yes, in the, in the group, there is a student, she's not a professor. And she says that when professors speak so fast, she can hardly get what the message is. Also, okay. and one what? experience, a experience I had, once I talked with uh, Ireland, uh, people from Ireland, uh -huh. and, and he 
spoke uh, with a lot of colloquialism, colloquial language, cultural language. And it was really hard for me to get the message. I asked him two or three times, hey, what do you say? What do you say? And the third time around, then I got what he wanted to say because he used slangs, colloquialisms, and he, he didn't use formal English. And that becomes really hard for me. Very good. Uh, one of the things that, the reason I asked this question is I want you to remember and think about the fact that you all have had, of course, a session, a whole session on self-reflection. And one of the things you learners and speakers of a second language need to be aware of is the fact that what, what you're having problems with. If you don't know what your problems are, how can you begin to solve them, right? So that's why I start with what problems do you have? Because how else, if you don't know what's going on, if you're just sitting there and say, oh, I don't understand anything. No, you need to think about what domain, what setting. The Irish is kind of interesting for, and you did a very good job of suggesting what kinds of problems you had. You had problems with colloquialism. Uh, you had, uh, I, I, yeah, I have trouble sometimes when someone is speaking with an Irish accent or with a Scottish accent or my, or difficult would be something like a Yorkshire accent from England, right? So the importance of question one, which we will spend a lot of time on is helping learners become aware of where their problems are. That's very important. Not that you know where their problems are, what they think of their problems. And they may have several. And they may need to prioritize which ones they want to focus on. And then they have to spend some time thinking about, well, how do I solve that problem? What I do when I'm here in, in Panama and people are talking at me very fast, I say, I'm sorry, can you speak a little slow? That's the way I solve the problem. Uh, not always possible if you're watching to television or listening to the radio or a movie, you can't slow them down. But in face-to-face -face conversations or on the telephone, you have an opportunity. So this is a very basic question I've started with. Um, I want, I want to, we took a lot of time, so I want to skip ahead a little. Uh, can someone, did anyone in answering question two say that they did indeed devote time to teaching listening? Did anyone say they did not? Okay, like, yes. Yes, please well, tell us. Good, uh -huh. hello, good afternoon. Okay, uh, some of my partners from group number one say that just taking into account the hundred percentage, just the sixty or seventy or seventy percentage of students can understand. Yes, and also say that some of the teachers are worried about this situation. Because, You're worried about it because they don't understand this. The students yes, don't. Yes, I worry, and, and the, some, that it is a problematic because some of the in some of the teachers are worried about this situation. Yes, because you know, you as a teacher, you can uh, plan a, a different or use different kind of strategies, but if the group cannot understand you, at least suppose. Or at the le or, or according to the level, so this it is a is a, a problem. So and we have to we as teacher have to try to manage the situation. Yes, have to try to adapt different kind of strategies for help them. Okay, very good, and that's why you're in this workshop because we need to. Uh, some of you say that you do teach listening, but 
that's a big that's a big word. You know, if you give students an opportunity to listen, is that teaching listening? In other words, if you give the material that you play in class or you and you say listen, that's or that's not teaching listening. Or another popular way of doing that, which is not teaching listening, is to say, here are 10 questions that or five, let's go back, five questions and listen for the answers. Now I'm going to have a text of some kind, listen for the answer. Is that teaching listening? No, that's helping them answer the questions. But if you're listening, when you're listening to me, I don't give you a set of questions. That's not how you listen. You listen. You have to have some techniques, some strategies for listening. Somebody doesn't give you the questions. That never happens. If you go to a lecture, you don't get the questions. You have to anticipate what the questions might be. That would be if you teach students to, to predict. Now, one of you, one of the rooms said that, they, and I thought that was very good, they sometimes give the title. Okay, if you get the title, of say a movie, what can you do with that? Well, one of you said, I, I don't know if I, they said that, but I thought you they were on the right track. Suppose you have a, a title like Boy Meets Girl. What do you think the movie is going to be about? Boys and girls and maybe their relationships. Does that help? Of course it helps because you know, first of all, they're using the words boy and girl. That means they're young people. And then it says meets. Oh, so I'm going to look, listen for how he tries to meet her. What do boys say to girls or girls say to boys when they want to meet them, when they want to get to know them better? Okay. So now I have some questions. Who generated the questions? I did, just listening to the title. So that's a very useful way to provide students with tools that they can use to listen. Okay, we're not talking, we're talking about tools or strategies, things to listen. Okay, I think we should move on unless someone has something else they want to say. Okay, it's not moving, hello. Uh, I did, I tried it. Oh, there we are. All right, that's what we got. All right, now my goal for this workshop, the whole workshop is that you, the participants, will be able to understand how critical listening is for language learning. I'm going to talk about the role that it plays, and it's a very critical one. And then you, you'll be able to state and illustrate the critical components of the listening process. What does the listening process consist of? And third, you'll be able to use teaching strategies that will promote learner awareness of their listening problem. Uh, all right, now we don't, you don't have a neighbor. I assume we were in a classroom, but um, let's go on for this for now. Here's the agenda for today. I'm going to give you a definition of listening. I'm going to talk about the listening process and what are the design elements and what is the role of hypotheses and the critical importance of how to raise learner awareness of their listening process. And to help you understand a little bit more about listening and the process, we're gonna compare and contrast reading versus listening. Now, many times people call both of those 
But I got to tell you, neither one is receptive. You won't understand if you're just sitting there letting the sounds come into your ears, if you're just hearing and not listening. And the same thing is true in reading. If you don't make to understand who's, you know, who's in the plot, what, what's their relationship, what's the setting, all kinds of things about reading. And finally, uh, I wanted to talk a little, just a briefly about your homework. I was asked to give you homework every day because we are going to spend four hours together with a break, of course. And you're supposed to spend four hours working on the homework. Now, the homework will be incorporated something we talk about each day into a lesson plan. Now, I understand that some, and we mean, some of you are actually teaching. That shouldn't be difficult. But some of you are not teaching. And maybe we should spend a, a little bit of time uh, finding out who's who so that, Veronica, you can, what I suggest is they pair, we pair a teacher with a non-teacher and together they can work out the thing. One, one of you may have understood uh, something. Odd. So let, let me go back for one second. Uh, Veronica, would you? Tell me, I'm here. Yeah, let me see. I want to see the participants. Can you? Okay. You can, to... you can see the participant. If you touch where the two heads are, says partic participants or participantes, there you can see the participants. So let's get, I'm gonna call your name, okay? And at that time, will you please tell me whether you are teaching English or maybe another language? Belsis? No, no, oh, you're, not, you're not playing, okay. All right, Adriana, are you teaching English? Yes. You yes. are teaching. Okay. How about Alejandra? Alejandra, are you teaching? It's un un unmute them. Huh? Go ahead. I'm talking to Alejandra. I don't don't. You know. Alejandra, can you tell me, are you teaching? Let's go on to Anna. Anna, are you teaching? Uh, Veronica, I need some help because I yes. can't, uh, okay. we're not getting, okay. I need to un, can you? Okay. Um. Let me see. Give me a second. All right, let's go back. We heard from I, Adriana. And I was uh, all right, here's another uh, option that I was just given. Uh, where is it? All right, here we are. When, when uh, Adriana, Aileen Rodriguez, can you raise your hand if you're teaching? Where the Hello, Professor. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. okay. Every, every, all right, everybody. If oh, you're teaching. Let's do something. Sorry, Professor. Let's do something. All those that are teaching at this moment, can you just use the icon and say, raise your hand so that Prof. Uh, Dr. Dunn can see who are teaching or not? Can you do that? And if you're teaching, do you want to participate? For example, Marisol, I see you You are teaching. Would you like to be, uh, would you also like to be uh, working with someone? Okay, we have, can, can you, uh, Dr. John, can you see the hands, the raising hands? 
Those who are raising hands are those who are teaching? Exactly, exactly. I have there... Javier, Karen, Enelda, Adriana, Ilka, um... Only five people are teaching. Good, well, morning. Uh, Good afternoon. Please, uh, you have not raised your hand. I have problem with the audio. When I when I open the audio, the, mm -hmm. the neighborhood is a really noisy, and then I I put the, I I close the audio. Okay. Okay, then, Alejandra. Can you just use the, the icon of raising your hand if you are teaching? I mean, we, we also need that. The, uh, I'm, yeah. well, no, in, no, the hand in Zoom, the icon that it says reactions or reacciones. Okay, okay, okay. There you raise your hand. Eileen, can you do that too? I'm not Anna, teaching. Anna, you're not teaching at this uh, moment? Okay. Hello, Anna, can you hear me? Yes, uh, hello. We can hear okay. you now. Uh, yeah, I'm not teaching. I'm okay. I'm good. Student. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Dan Daniela. Daniela, can you hear us? I am a student. You are a student. Isab Isabella. I'm a student too. Okay, Hilda. Um. I am student. I don't teach in this this in this moment. Okay, Indira. Students. Osiris. Okay. Um, I used to work as a as a teacher, but not right not right now, professor. Not at this okay. moment. Okay. Okay. So you are a teacher uh, already. Exactly. You have you have experience already teaching. Okay. So you, you so you can raise your hand. Um. Uh, uh, this. Aristide, Aristides, Aristides, are you there? Okay, no response. Uh, Celia, oh yes, yeah, I you am. are a teacher. <laughs> 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 Can you raise your hands, please, on the Zoom chat, the icon. <laughs> so so if, if I have few experience, can I rest? I raise my hand. Yeah, if you have a teaching experience, okay. we need you to, to just put your hands on the on the screen so that Dr. Joanne can see who are uh, have been uh having who has had experience, even if you're not teaching right now. Okay, no, I raise my hand because I have experience. <laughs> okay, thank you, Hilda. So Finally, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. Then over here, we have 10, 11, uh, and 11 that have had experience. And then we have one, two, two, three, four, five, six that are students. Six, I'm sure. Let me Maria see. Del Cid, are you? Maria del Cid, are you a teacher or a student? You didn't raise your hand. I think I think I had I asked her and if I'm not mistaken, she said she was a student. I'm not I'm not sure. Hmm. But I think we can work with those that are already responded. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Veronica, how yes, about tell me? Uh, let's do this. Let's break them up, and for the, especially for the first one, why don't we break them up into how many people do you have a total? In total, with us, okay, now we have 13. Okay, give me a second. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 people. How many? 20. Okay. Uh, hmm. 
Right. Well, why don't, can you do this while we're, and let us know by the end of the day, uh, by the end of the session, uh, put the ones that are teaching uh, together. Uh, and if you, if you, there are nine that would say they're teaching or have to be taught and put them together with the nine that haven't. And one group will have, two groups will have three people. At least one person who is teaching. Okay. Let us know at the end. At the okay? end, okay. okay. Uh -huh. Now, uh, maybe you can do that at the break. Uh, my understanding, and I have to be clear, that the that this homework and your participation uh that i'm either going to give you a pass or a fail is that correct marisol yes uh, sorry oh. could you repeat what'd you say she wants you to repeat huh if you can repeat it oh okay i'm saying that my understanding that my responsibility is to look over the homework and think about student participation and the grade that I will give is either pass or fail. Yes, yes, okay. they have to do their assignment. Yes, What's it? yeah, they have to do. You the have assignment. to check that they do the assignment. Yes, I need to find. I need to, today. We'll do it in groups because uh, some people. I I need to have people with teaching experience. Uh, but next time we'll try. We'll find a way to do it another way. Uh, the other thing I, uh, and this is for Marisol, I assume that everyone who, many of you are students, but those of you who are not students, is it also that you get a grade? Does everybody need a grade? The break is for everybody, yes. Right, except for you guys, the uh, Amphitryons, huh? Okay. All right. So we got through that. Uh, where are we? All right. At three o'clock, at about quarter to three, we'll probably take a break. You guys need it. All right, let's go on. All right. This thing has been called the neglected skill. It was assumed, and I, I was part of that group, that when you teach speech, speaking, you are teaching listening. In fact, uh, my first assignment was in Brazil, uh, in Sao Paulo, and I never taught listening. I taught speaking. And most of your textbooks don't teach, they test. And I was alluding to that when I said, or if you give somebody five questions, give them material to, to listen to and answer the question, that's a test that does not teach you how to listen. Now, if the students generated the questions, that's teaching listening. But if the teacher generates the question or the textbook generates the question, that's testing. Listen, but it's a challenging skill. And I'm going to show you in, in many, many different ways during the next few hours and days why it's so challenging. It is a challenging skill. When helping learners develop good listening comprehension skills, however, is not usually part of the language learning courses. Your textbooks don't do it very rarely. And even books that are for listening don't, te don't teach how to listen. Even those, be careful. All right, next. All right, why is it important to develop learner skills in listening. And I'm. this is something that's on the web. Take a picture uh, because it's a very easy to read 
article called, Why the Heck is Listening Such a Big Deal? You can tell by the very casual language, heck, uh, big deal, that it's a very basic, simple thing. But he has quite a, this particular person, uh, although he speaks in a fairly um, casual way, has a great deal to offer. So I would encourage you to take a picture. Has everyone had a chance to take a picture that wants to? Okay. Now, here's my definition of listening. It's an active process. Remember, we talked about hearing versus listening. You have to be active when you listen. I show you somebody skiing to show you this, that if you're not as active in listening as this uh, surfer, you're not going to get the message. You have to pay attention. You have to, and here's what you do. This is how you are active. You collect and interpret information. Rarely do people, unless you have a photographic kind of memory, you don't hear every single word anyone says. You hear kinds of things that may have to do with your background, may have to do with your goals, uh, may have to do with your interests, and you interpret information. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, it's also important, especially for beginners, there are two kinds of clues. There are visual clues, and especially with beginners, that helps in selecting and interpreting. So when you're listening to something, if there's, a, if there's a picture, if there's some action, uh, if there's interaction, then that gives you some clues as to what's going on. And auditory clues. That's one kind of thing. Or if I say, I don't like that. That's kind of a clue or shut up. That's an auditory clue, not just what I said, but the way I said it. So there are all kinds of, or sweetie, would you bring me this? Those are all auditory clues that are not the words, but what's how it's said. Or I whisper something. If I'm, that's telling you that maybe it's a secret or I don't want other people to hear it. Okay. And you do that in order to determine what's going on and what the speaker is trying to express. Right? Okay. Ha. Now, some of the key concepts in the definition. One of them is interpret. What does uh, I'm, the, this first sentence, the panda eats shoots and leaves, what does that, can someone interpret what's meant? How would you interpret it? I look for volunteers and you can unmute your. Question is, uh, yeah, it's a question. You gotta look, give them. Somebody want to raise their hand and we'll let you tell us, what does this sentence mean? Know all the words. A panda is a bear. Eat is to digest or, or chew. Shoots. Well, that has two different meanings. Shoot with a gun or shoot. I, I think that it is to to create uh, that you that the student think it, it is possible and he and he or she develop uh, the imagination of is is this metaphoric uh, uh, 
metaphoric expression because it's not so logic, but you can use your imagination, your, your concentration, your previous experience to, to make sense about that. that. Well, what are you making sense of? Notice I said each, we know more or less. Shoots has at least two meanings and leaves is a verb, but it's also a noun. So if this has no punctuation, which in this case it does not, you don't know what, it, you can't interpret it. If it says the panda comma, I'm sorry, the panda eats comma, shoots comma, and leaves. That tells you that he is, the shoots are a, a vegetable. A comma makes completely a different, yeah. What's that? The commas makes, makes oh, yes, I make a, super but, comma, but, it, it has but if you comma, put, if I, I put I feel panda like, eats, comma, shoots and leaves. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, or if I say, you know, if, depending on where you put the comma, your interpretation is different. So yeah. what the point of this particular sentence is for you to notice that it's not just vocabulary. If I, if I say the panda eats, shoots, and leaves, oh, sorry, the panda eats, shoots, and leaves, in that case, you think maybe he, the panda has a gun. But I've, if I said the panda eats, shoots, and leaves, then you think maybe shoots is a uh, vegetable. All right, let's move on to another. This is my favorite example to use. Um, every What is the literal meaning of manana? You, you're Spanish speakers. What is, what, if you look in a dictionary, what does manana mean? Anybody? Next day. What? <laughs> next day. Yeah. Well, all right. The next day or tomorrow. Okay, my experience working in Latin America is if I, it, that may, it, it could mean next day or tomorrow, but it could also mean if I asked a worker to help me with something and he or she said, mañana. Meaning for that word. Huh? Say what? You think yeah, I'll get mañana. the word? Yeah, if, mañana in Spanish. You are talking about mañana in Spanish. Yeah, it yes. could be right. tomorrow, but also it could be in the morning. Morning. Sure, but think about it in terms of the interpretation. I uh, Suppose I say to a worker, can you do that for me? To, uh, can you do this for me? And he says, mañana. One of the probable possible interpretations is it's not going to get done. Mañana means never. <laughs> Future with no specific time. Professor, even there are a, a song that mañana, mañana is good enough for me when the people don't like to make things, things quickly. Well, what well, part of it is, especially if you're talking about a boss to a worker, you don't like to say no. It's not polite, it's rude. So you say something like mañana. Or in English, we might say, I'll put it up to a committee. If they say that, the answer is no. It doesn't mean they're going to put it up to, for a committee. Uh, my dear husband, who is here, uh, when I ask him, he's from South Dakota, a Midwestern place. And if I, he doesn't want to say it, if he doesn't want to do something, you want to go see that movie? He says, I'll have to think about it. What is it? How should I interpret that meaning? I'll have to think about it is no. He doesn't want to say no to me. So he says, I'll have to think about it. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Or suppose I say, shall I wear the, the red dress? And somebody, my friend says, wear the green one. What is the interpretation? They don't like the red one, or the red one is uh, too young, too old, whatever. So when we're listening and somebody is speaking, we can have all kinds of interpretations. In fact, that's where a lot of misunderstanding happens because you think you, you think you know what they said, but they didn't. You didn't. Visual and auditory clues. Some visual clues are um, clear, but a lot of them aren't. And a lot of auditory clues, if I'm whispering, I could whisper because it's, there's, I don't want to bother everybody. But if I whisper and I think it's a secret, that's also a clue. Help, 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 I need to change. Hello? That's this. I can't move this thing. Aha. All right, here are a couple of other key concepts in the definition. Active, we talked about that. You need to pay attention. And it, what you're being active is not just open your eyes or pay attention. You're selecting and interpreting. That's how you are active. It's very important that you do that. Okay. Now, what affects interpretation? All right, let me go back here. What affects interpretation? Can I have, I want to see people and I want people. Uh, hello, Belthus. Help. I want to see them and I want them to see me. What are the things that might affect? All right, you want to see me? Okay. Okay, Maria, do you have some ideas? Other people? Tell me, what do you think affects interpretation? I've mentioned several things. What do you have? Yep. What is that? Oh, I don't know. Karen, say, say first you. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I think the environment, people previous knowledge. Environment. Environment. Can make, a, make me a little clearer. Who is that? Psycholo psychological interpretation has to be with the previous experience, with your personality, with your feelings, with your emotion. It's a, it's a really deep, deep um, concept. Yes, your relationship with the person, you yeah. know, and where you are, you know, so where, your, the domain you are, uh, your previous experience, right? What knowledge you bring to it. Okay, let me, any others? Okay, here are some things. Familiarity with the language or with the speaker. One of you mentioned, uh, but sometimes, if you imagine, even if you're talking to somebody who's from another country where they speak Spanish, and you might interpret a particular word or a particular way of saying something differently, your background knowledge. I'll give you an example. Uh, I like this one because we, my husband and I were in El Salvador, the time of the guerrillas. And they had a pamphlet that explained about, um, well, the thing that's nice about it is there were pictures and some of the words were like English words. Now my husband, was trained as a park ranger. He was in the military. He doesn't know any Spanish, but he was able to read 50% because of the background knowledge he had about military things. 
So your background knowledge can help a great deal. Another thing that could affect it is what are you listening for? What, why do you want to hear what that person has to say? You might want to know, um, let's imagine you can speak Russian and you say, okay, God forbid, Putin is going to drop the nuclear bomb, right? Well, that's a motive. If you're a, say you're a newspaper person and you're saying, eh, is there any clue in what he is saying that makes you think he might use the bomb? Thing? Okay. Relevance. I like the I like the word relevance. We don't pay enough attention in teaching about relevance. What why is that? Why is relevance important? If it if it's important for me, what's that gonna what how does that change? What does that change if you have if it's relevant? I need to hear from you guys. Remember, I'm the one that gives you pass and fail, so I need some more. If, if the topic if the, if the topic is important for the person or for me, I'm going to pay more attention. And I, I'm going to see that like is important that, that I need to learn that, that is focusing on something that is about me. So in that way, people can listen better and can learn. Okay. Also, please put your picture on so I can see what you look like when you're talking. Thank you. All right, who else? What is... Hi. <laughs> that was your I was who were talking, yes. Yeah, all right. How about other people? What, why is relevance so important? Relevance is really important because is if the student see no relationship between the 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 way you are teaching the the topic you are teaching and is the relevance the importance with the real situation in the world in the present in in his or her life has no importance for him is not relevant. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Relevance is one of the most important attributes of, uh, for learning because relevance, if something is relevant, you're motivated, right? If it's not relevant, you say, oh, I have to listen to this. I don't care anything about it, but okay. I'll keep myself in the chair. To give you an example, if the teacher asks me to write an essay, okay, I can write an essay. If she tells me, or he tells me that it should be about sports, I don't care. I really don't care about sports. I suppose if I were forced to, I might look something up on the web and write a paper, but it would not be my best effort. Now, if you ask me to write about music or dance or theater, oh, I can do a wonderful job because those are topics that happen to interest me. Notice the way we, by not giving students choices, you know, the textbooks are mixed blessings because they don't give you choices. And choices are very important to relevance. Okay. Uh, what affects interpretation? Status. Who's talking to whom, right? And the way the conversation evolves as it keeps going. Oh, I thought you meant this, but now I see you mean that. As you keep listening, you find out that you had a different idea of what was going on. I thought that was just a pleasant conversation, but you were telling me to in your way. Also, there's a lot, yeah, language is not straightforward. There's a lot of ambiguity, lots and lots of it, and that will affect your interpretation. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take 15 minutes right now. It's quarter to, two, to three, right? And o'clock. And we have two more hours. 
So let's everybody take an, uh, 15 minutes. And if any of you are need to ask me a question, please use the chat function. Okay? Have a drink of water or whatever. <laughs> So we're going into a break right now. So we see you, you at three o'clock. Veronica, something to say? Um, no, I'm um form conforming the groups. So when we come back, I guess um we'll have the, the group forms and I'll I'll share the information on the shot so that everybody knows will know who they will be working with.
así, que la siento como muy estricta, o no sé si es old fashion, no sé cómo decirte, pero, ay no, no hay tiempo para estar cerca de
Okay. All right. I'm not talking to the Hello, hello. We are back. Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, two two wow. things. Two things hello, before hello. I pass the mic to to Doctor John. Um, is everybody here? Hello. Is I everyone so. back? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I have okay. been here all the time. Good. I'm Two trying things. trying to connect from my computer, okay? Because I had a problem with the computer, but I'm trying to do it here from here. Okay. I I, th I already I'm sent here. a message on the Zoom chat, but I'm going to say it out loud. Please, uh, we request from you to turn on your cameras. Um, I know uh, some of you probably I don't like to do that, but the speaker is requesting that we have our cameras on so that she can have a better interaction with us. So I request uh, to do so. Uh-huh, that's one. The right. second thing is that uh, Educación Continua already has posted several times the attendance list so please make sure before you leave to sign up for your attendance. That's important. Okay, Professor, uh, Dr. Joan, Joan. Okay. Um, yeah, I really do would like it if I could see your faces because otherwise I could be talking to the wall. And that's about the feeling I have is that if I don't see a reaction, and see whether you're understanding or don't understand. Uh, it just, it does, I can't help you. I can't correct or change or whatnot. So please, everyone who can turn on your uh, camera, please do. I have one more thing that I wanted to mention before we go back. A colleague of mine in Bogota, Colombia is doing a special project and she's looking for another class to work with, something called the COIL experience, which is, you know it? It's called Collaborative Online International Learning. And what she says, to deliver, to, I'll read the, the first part of this, to deliver ex learning experiences to my students I would like to work with professors from other universities. She's at the University of La Sabana, and she says it's important to support teachers uh, who can open teaching moments under the collaborative online international learning approach, COIL. Hence, I would like to partner with a professor to design some lessons, that is one class or a few, that will allow my students who study a minor in intercultural studies to meet other students. They will not only be able to improve their language skills, but also learn about cultural aspects from other students. So if anyone is interested, I can put this in the chat. Uh, can we take a picture of it and put it in the chat? We'll take a picture of it and put it in the chat. Uh, she's a very interesting person, and they're doing a number of interesting topics. So if you're interested at all in intercultural kinds of things, uh, a whole bunch of things, OK? OK, uh, it, it, let's let you in. <laughs> OK. I would like to see more faces. I have two Karens. I can't. I see Karen. There's one Karen there, and there's one Karen there, Javier, Alejandra, let me see, Daniela, Isabella, hi Adriana Hernandez, Anna, Anna, can I see a picture? Not a, not a, there's Ilka, Osiris, Hilda, I don't see your picture. All right. On the wrong way. Okay. 
All right, what about Ana Melissa and Aristides? Javier, your face. <laughs> All right. Enelda, I see you. Ilka, hello. <laughs> Good. What about Hilda? I see a picture. I, I, a... I am. Yes, I am here. But when okay. was the break? Well, the break, I, I served my, my dinner. So I eat this. Uh, when I finish, I will, oh, I will turn on the camera. <laughs> okay. Very good. Sorry. Okay. So I'm let, here. This is a, Hello. I'm here. This is Hi. a brief. Uh, somebody. This is Hi. a brief. Anna. Hi. Oh, there you are, Anna Melissa. Good. Very good. All right. I see some people in here. Javier, I'd like to see you. Karen Arango. Karen, another Karen. I don't have a last name. Okay. All right, moving ahead. Did anyone have any questions from the last two hours? Okay. Anything for the moment? What you think? Nothing. Nothing for the moment. Okay, good. All right. In this pic, I want to. Can they see everything? Okay. Sorry. This is a kind of diagrammatic thing of the listening process. I want you to look at the upper part. Here is a picture. She says something. Can you read it, anybody? Okay, J, F, A, semi, S, D. Can you read that? I, I don't know what she's saying, right? And that's supposed to go straight into the head of the listener, okay? That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is STM, which stands for short term memory. We all have both short term and long term memory. Okay. So when somebody speaks, short term memory has very limited capacity, it's not very big. So you take in seven or eight words in your short-term memory. And if you're trying to understand, go check your long-term memory. You know, does this any of this sound like what I already know? If so, you sort of interpret it or actively do something with it, and it goes into your short-term memory, and then you interact with the person. So it's not just, remember I started at the beginning, it's not just what this person says and goes right into your head. No, no, no. It goes through a process. And this is a very abbreviated picture of it, but somewhere in there is long-term memory. In other words, what you already know, okay? Help, I need to move on. <laughs> okay. So, this definition of the learning, of the listening process, has some implications for lesson design. For people who are very beginners, visuals are very important. Now those visuals should be very clear and should be something that relate to what the learner knows. Sometimes the visuals are not clear, but if possible, a visual kind of helps. Then the second thing is, give the students the opportunity to ask questions. If I give you this title, what questions do you think you want to listen for? That's the way you want to design your listening comprehension. Get them to ask the questions and find the answers. Okay, that's, that's the way you listen. Probably when you heard the title of my presentation here, 
you had some questions. I wonder if she's going to do this, or I wonder if she's going to do that. Or you may not have had many questions because you haven't thought about it too much. Sometimes you don't have that much information in your long-term memory. But to the extent possible, you do that. It also means that you have to encourage making and using hypotheses. That way, remember my boy meets girl, what kind of hypotheses do you have, can you make, right? Is he going to uh, talk about the weather? Is he going to talk about the news? Is, if they're at the beach, is he gonna talk about how nice the weather and the water is? Is he gonna ask her something about, oh, I see you have an Olympic size uh, style bathing suit. Are you a comp competitor? So, you know, looking at the picture and you might say, okay, these are some of the questions and this is some of the dialogue. Why is that important? Why is it important to make some predictions? Why is it important? Somebody help, help. Got you. Come on, I need some input. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. What do you mean with prediction? What do I mean with prediction? By making and using hypotheses about what might happen, that allows you to predict what might happen, right? I was, I was saying, okay, boy and girl meeting, what, what's likely to happen? What is the boy or girl after? You know, is he asking her to loan him a quarter? No, that's not a very good hypothesis when you're talking about boys meet girls. Okay. And, and but you still have to, like, look at, you have to okay. look at the uh, Yes. Professor John, yes. That, uh, what I think you mean is that by making predictions, it's like in the form of questions, for example, boy meets girl, uh, I can ask, are they going to dance? Okay, that will be a question. That um, will be a question. Are they but... going to go to a restaurant? In what? Are they going to go to a restaurant or are they going to eat? But something will help you narrow down your prediction. If they're at a beach, what's likely to happen? And it says meets. Now we don't know the meaning of meets because it could be for the first time and it could be for a date. So that's a question we might want to ask. But predictions not always correct because we don't have may not have enough background knowledge but by making some sort of narrowing it down what could it be you're right marisol is it for example that uh they're going they're going to go to a restaurant you say may you know then you're going to put and if they go to a restaurant you would be able maybe to predict what what are they going to talk about? They'll talk about food for sure. And you might bring in your long-term memory. Oh, what are the words for ordering at a restaurant? Or looks like they're going to talk about if, if she, for example, if they're bathing suits, is probably the case of not going immediately to a restaurant. Something connected with the swimming pool. Right? Or I don't have it with me here, but uh, imagine that there were here on my desk a box and people were walking up to the box with a piece of folded paper and putting it in. What's your hypothesis? What do you think's going on? Buddy, come on, you know it. I have a box. It has a little hole in a slit in it. People are coming up and putting pieces of paper in, folded pieces of paper. What do you think is going on? <laughs> yeah, 
Here's an they're answer. They're voting. They're voting. Okay. That's that's a hypothesis. It looks, given the information that I have, they're probably voting. Okay. And depending on the location, imagine that it looks like a classroom. Right? If it's a classroom, what do you think they're voting for? Maybe to get someone who's going to be the person who's going to represent all the students from the school. Yeah, represent somebody who might be president, who might, yeah. might be voting for the president. Yeah. yeah. Depending on where you are nowadays in universities, in some universities, you might be voting on who's going to be on uh, the university's committee that makes decisions. Sure. That, that could be another book. I, I, well, anyway, but notice that by looking at the information, the visuals, the, the action and the interaction, in the case of voting, you were able to say, because of the visual and because people were putting a piece of paper in a box, you were already making some sort of hypothesis and predicting what it's going to be about, all right? Another is to encourage interpretation. That obviously depends on the proficiency level, but that's what I'm doing with you. I'm saying, okay, what do you think it is? Don't be afraid, you know, use your knowledge, use your experience. And here's Michael Ross, who's one of the top people in listening. He has books. Teaching listening is about building expectation, developing interpretations, not, not finding correct answers. Not listening. You're trying to figure out how to do the thing, not just look for the answer. So, you know, okay? We're going to try and move on. All right. Now, here are three criteria that I use. I've mentioned them mostly, but the physical surroundings. Imagine that you're in something that looks like a church. It has an altar. Um, you see a man and a woman, or two men, uh, or two women, in wedding clothes. And there's some sort of audience, people sitting in pews observing. And the couple, depends on where you are, might be facing someone looking like a priest or a minister. Okay, that's two things. We've got physical surroundings. Uh, in the action, it could be that uh, they walk up to the aisle and imagine at the end there's a kiss, right? Or some other activity. So all of these are, all of us know a great deal. I, you know, think about it when students come to a language class, especially the beginners, they feel like they're stupid and we help make them stupid, feel that way. We help them because in beginning classes, we always, we don't rely on the knowledge they already have. Let me say something. English and Spanish share 50% vocabulary, 50%. Do we start with that? No. Hello, how are you? Macho. My name is, how old are you? That's not using their knowledge. Why don't we start with what they know? My colleague was teaching people to read Russian. It turns out the Russian alphabet is sort of like the Latin one, but not. How could she get them to think about it and make some hypothesis? Well, she had a map of Russia. And one of the places was in Cyrillic writing, Moskva. 
Well, what do you think that is? Muskwa. What does that sound like? Huh? The country. No. Mos Moscow. Moscow. Wow, well, it's in Russian. Huh? What country? What is it? Oh, Moscow. Moscow. Right. That helps you. You don't, you know something. Knowledge that you have. I'll give you another example, which is kind of a fun one. I was working in Indonesia, and my colleague came from the United States to visit me, and we went to a Javanese play. Okay. Now, neither of us knew Javanese, but they have a number of plays that come from the Indian epic stories. And this play was about one of the stories. So what happened is, here's the hero, here's the villain, okay? It's the villain, and oh, he's, he's hurting. What does the hero do? He turns around to his friend, and he's boasting about himself. Look at me, look what I did. My colleague said, don't turn around, he's going to get you. And that's what happened next. Now, how did he know that? He didn't know Javanese. I don't think he knew many of the epic stories of, of India and, and whatnot. What happened? He was using the actions and the interactions to help him understand. So we understood what was going on. Why, when I teach, tell people, you know 50% of the vocabulary of English. They don't feel like children anymore. They're bringing knowledge to the situation. Is that motivating? Is it motivating? What do you think, Anna? If they already know 50% of the vocabulary, with some changes, obviously, and some false cognates, but how does that make a person feel, Anna? Excited. I don't know. Excited, motivated. Motivated, right? exactly. Right, motivated, okay? So part of listening is recognizing what you already know. And as I say, here we are, in remote Indonesia, and my colleague comes and can predict what's going to happen next. That's pretty impressive. Okay. okay. Now, given the definition of listening, I want to start early. Start with beginners. Why? Why do you want to start with a beginner? Well, they're trying to learn a language. They have to have some input. You're, you know, you're, you may be speaking, but they have to have some input. And they have to have what some people would call comprehensible input. What makes it comprehensible? Visuals, right? Action, interaction, settings. That makes it comprehensible. So you want to start with beginners because that's what they need. They need, your speaking is not helping their listening. You have to help them with listening. Another thing is short amounts of audio. For a beginner, how much audio do you think they can take? How many words? Anybody? Inelda, how many words for a beginner? Here you hold on, Elda. Hold on. Here, it is right here. Huh? Can you un un unmute yourself, then, Elda? Okay, I'm sorry. What, so, how many you... words do you think a beginner can can take in? in the, hmm? at a time? Words? I mean, per period of class or for what? In What's that? Case? Period of class. Yeah, period well, of class? period of class or. At any time, 
They're not I want to say more good. than between 10 and 20 words, maybe less than that. I think less than that, yes. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. It's too much. It it's depends much. also, it depends also how, I mean, how old is the, is, is the person? Okay, can you say something more? I'm gonna say that, that sometimes that depends on how old is the person because if we start with little child, I mean, they learn more faster than old people. I mean, like teenagers, for example. Well, it depends on what you're using. What yeah. we found, uh, research done at the University of California, Berkeley, is that some people do some actions to help themselves listen. They go in a group, they can't say anything, but they say, yes, that's right. Oh, so they, they interact in a very primitive way but they are still getting input. All right. Yeah, can you go down here? Huh? What? Yeah, but I can't see everybody. Okay, but Isabel is raising What? Isabel is raising Are you raising your hand, Isabel? Yes, uh, I just want to add that it also depends on the topic. Because although yeah. a person can be a beginner, uh, you may know about some topics, or you may not. So it depends. That's true. Uh, but if you're a beginner in a language, you can't put the input is not much. I tell you why I know this. I did a listening comprehension experiment, and I played a video that had lots of action. Lots of interaction, um, lots of things, you know, visuals. Five minutes. What process it? You know, I, I first of all, I played it for that's an interesting thing. I played it without the, 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 the audio. Here's, a, here's another kind of technique. Take a very short video, maybe two minutes or less, cartoons maybe, and play it without the set. And ask, them, this is another way to get them to, to predict what's going on. What do you think has happened? Very important. Another is help with emotions. What can you do if people look tired. No, no, but move down. I want to call on some. If someone, oops, no. Games. Huh? Games. Look, games? Okay, what else? Javier, what can we do if someone looks tired? Well, relax, just, play. So what? To relax, just play. Play, okay. Now, interactive, interactive activities. Yes, I make dynamics with the students. You make to uh, to make dynamics. If not, they sleep in the classroom. They get asleep in the classroom. All right. Another thing: How many of you ask your students to stand up and stretch? Okay. That's all it takes. Everybody raise your hands up. I want to see your hands up. Everybody raise your hand, both hands. <laughs> uh, Eileen, raise your hands, everybody. Stretch. Oh my goodness. You've been sitting, you're laughing, do it. <laughs> Stretch. That's helpful. Or ask them, yes, ask them, what do they do to relax? Now, I had a student in Mexico, and she was doing a course, and she had, because she had such a busy schedule, she was doing it at night, maybe about 10 o'clock at night. This happens with college students. And she says, oh, I can't do this. I'm too tired. Look at one more. I'm tired. I said, why don't you think about Leave the, the translation course. Leave it. 
go walk around the block or go walk for 15 minutes and come back. She did it and she says, oh, I have so much more energy. So you have to find out what works for your student. Maybe it's a bar of candy or a piece of chocolate or some music because students also need to be aware of, of how their emotions play with what they're trying to do. Okay. Oh, no, 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 back up. No, here. All right. So don't assume people's background knowledge. Uh, there was, how was it? For Vietnamese students, and they had, I think they had pictures of snowmen. Tropical countries didn't know what a snowman was. So, why would you use something? So, yeah, you don't know what their background knowledge is. You better ask them, do you know what this is? Or can you name it? And you want to suggest some strategies. Yes, pay attention to the uh, setting. All of these things we're talking about. Right now, students need to be in touch with learning process. What they can do and can't do to. Um, let me start with number two, because that's a little easier. You will literature, many, many examples. Can or cannot do, right? Can you follow a 30 minute lecture in English, right? Can you get, can you telephone? Right, uh, Marcel. I don't know if she's still there, but anyway, Marcel, is she? No, she's not there right now. Uh, talk about But what this is is you give students a list, and you check how well can you do this. What does that do? It gives them a mental picture, right, of what they need to focus on. What are their problem areas? What are their strengths? Same thing is true in these focus groups. If you have time, you divide students up into groups of three or four, and you say, okay, talk about what problems you have with English, and what can you do about it? One of them that someone mentioned is talking too fast. What can you do about people think, right? Um, ask them to talk slower. Uh, you could um, find words that you know. But this person is like, you know, if you're talking to a police officer in the customs office, you know, you can kind of questions is he or she going to ask you? Right. Now we're going to focus. How many of you took the first uh, course, which was about self-reflection? I see a boat of uh, how tell me in the boat. Yeah. Raise your hand if you were in the in the uh, class. Anybody else? They weren't there. Hmm. Excuse me, Professor, can you repeat, please? What? Can you, can you repeat the last, the last question? request? My question is, what's the name? What's your question? First uh, Anyway. The seminar was promoting self-regulated learning. Yes, exactly. Teaching. How many of you took the first seminar on self-directed uh, learning? One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, that looks about, is that about it? Fine. Fine, okay. The rest of you haven't. What we are talking about, and we will be talking about, some people call it self-directed. Some people nowadays talk about self-reflection, and I call it learner self-management. Learner needs to be in control of his. You can't do it all for them. You can't teach them all of the language. You can't teach them, first of all, but you can't even facilitate it. So we're going to talk about three things that most people talk about as metacognitive strategies that are a part of self-reflection, self-management. And that's these three, goal setting, task analysis, and monitoring. So we're going to spend most of our time together learning about these three uh, techniques that give your students, and you can facilitate using them with your students uh, so that they can, you can begin how to listen. Any questions? No, for now. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's going on? Uh huh. Oh, here's the focus group. All right. This is kind of interesting. You make a list of all the places. This is one way to do a focus group. Make a list on the blackboard or whiteboard or whatever, <laughs> or screen of all the places that students listen to the target language. And the more specific, the better. Then you select one of them, for example, listening to a TV drama or a soap opera. And under that domain, make two columns. Problem, solution, and ask students to name the problems they have listening to that domain. What problems do you have listening to soap operas? Or the news, or uh, I don't know what else you have an opportunity to listen to, but there's, oh, with the internet, there are all sorts of things you can listen to. And you got you selected the domain, you asked them to name the problems. And ask them to select solutions to each problem. And the same solution can solve more than one problem. So this is a way, again, we are building awareness of my specific listening process and problems. Everybody has a different one. Okay. So select three or four domains of those ones, except one you'll remember is of all the places. Divide the students into three or four groups and ask, depending on the number of students you have, ask each group to discuss the problems You may need to help them clarify what a, what's a legitimate problem or valid solution. And then you... One of the most powerful, and I'm sure you're aware, is that people listen to their peers more than they listen to you. So if their peers have a solution, maybe I can... Um... Particular oh, this is focus group. Let's go on. Um, let's go on to what is the difference between reading and listening? How many people do we have, Veronica? 20. Okay. You can't turn to the person next to you, but Veronica, would you divide them into 10 groups? And think about the differences there are between reading and listening. 
Veronica? Okay, right, I'm, I'm here. Give me okay. a second. Okay. Give me a second. Uh, okay, have you got them going? Where do we want to go to the small groups? Okay. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Sorry, listen of course you you can you can learn this this is prime primary listening mm -hmm. all right let me show you what okay here are some differences that i have noticed first of all think about it um boundaries between words are marked but in listening, the boundaries aren't marked. Words go together. So think about it with reading. You have punctuation, period, exclamation point. But how do they do that in listening? Some sort of intonation. Or in some languages, some sort of particle. Uh, Japanese saw this, eh? That's a way of saying, isn't that? Yeah, that's a question. What does that do? Since we're here at the moment, what does that do mean for intonation? That make it to know when the sentence ended. You need to know was the sentence a question. Oh, uh, what was important? There are no pauses or hesitations. You just sometimes people put dot 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 or something to indicate. But when people are speaking, there are many pauses, many hesitations. But depending, of course, on the particular kind of listening obviously we've been watching the news a lot and some of the better speakers there's no hesitation or pauses and i'm very impressed but in an ordinary conversation there are pauses and hesitations in general in reading there's more formal language but not in speaking when you're listening, you can have colloquial slang. You mentioned that with the Irishman, more standard grammar, 
restarts you, is you start saying something, you say, oh, what I meant to say was that kind of thing. And here's some more. In reading, you have mostly full sentences. Depends. You know, it's a conversation, less so. But in listening, what you've got are idea units. So you're going to listening for the sentence, you're listening for particular things that mean something to you. There are no changes in sound. Right? You know, if you the difference between um, versus information. Uh, sorry, that's not a great example, but uh, sounds do tend to change depending on the part of speech and that sort of thing. Usually, I'm sorry, usually uh, in reading complex grammar, but in listening is simpler. Again, depending on, are you giving it a lot? You know, when we, when our President Biden gives a presentation, he's re basically reading something. He's not really, uh, you're listening, but he's reading. Uh, reading is usually more correct grammatically. Uh, speaking, people make a lot of mistakes. They do often correct them. There are grammatical errors, even native speakers. This one I heard several of you mention that the reader can go at their own pace. In other words, if you're one page, one paragraph, a minute, 10 pages, you can choose. Whereas in listening, speech is fast and you can't control the pace. If you do try to, uh, admit her, <laughs> right? If you do try to uh, slow down the pace, you can do it. I do it in Spanish. Uh, but it's two people. But lots of times, if you slow it down too much, you don't have a conversation. All right, let me ask, has anybody else noticed some other differences between reading and listening? I, this was, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, okay, implications. Anybody else? Where are my people? Anybody find anything else that I didn't? Okay. All right, let's go on. What does this mean for teaching and listening? What we just noticed. First of all, the critical importance of intonation. I don't know how many of you have read about intonation or learn something you're about You're not it. sharing screen right now. Are you, are you going to share screen or are you just going okay. to continue? Uh, who is that? Marisol. You're not sharing screen right now. Okay, hold on. What'd she say? Oh, you're not sharing the screen. Just a minute. Oh. All right, so help? Yes, we can see it now. Thank okay. You. So what do we know about intonation? Intonation turns out to be a very, very critical part of English break things up into phrases, and within the phrase, the word that's louder and longer 
and often higher. So that's, it plays a very important grammatical and interpretive role. So I tell you know, I can tell you that if you can speak perfect English, perfect, perfect grammar, elegant words, but if your intonation isn't correct, it's very difficult to understand. Let me give you, and for instance, I was visiting my mother in Washington, D.C. I was in a big hurry at that time, and I was trying to get some information from the embassy of Nigeria in Africa. And it turns out that Nigeria, having been a British colony, people there learn English and they speak British English but the intonation is totally different. So I said to my mother, would you please, uh, this gentleman's gonna give you some information. Do you mind writing it down? I'm gonna go take a shower. Things, okay. I came back down after my shower and my mother said, I couldn't understand it. So fine, and I find very, you know, the difference between English, which people have pointed out, and Spanish is this division into almost musical things. So here's a section, and there are four beats, and the beats are in different places. Take a look at a book. In Spanish, every beat. So that's how you can often tell when someone is speaking from, from Spanish, because their intonation isn't the same. The rhythm isn't the same. Okay? So people need to learn about intonation almost more than about the differences between sounds. I think it's the most critical thing for listening that in terms of sounds. Another problem people have is phonological variation where a word in one part of speech has one sound and another part of speech has another sound. Another thing, we mentioned this several times, it's important to at, encourage students about their background knowledge. What do you know about? No, this is about boy meets girl. What do you know about boy meets girl? What are they likely to say? Where is the domain? You're in the church. What are people likely to say? That's lever helping them leverage their knowledge to interpret. Encourage them to ask for clarification. Now, that's an interesting question because so many, I don't know how it is in Panama, but is it's the teacher who's in control asking for clarification. This roots the teacher away from. But if you're going to try to understand and learn to listen, you need to ask for clarification. And you need to encourage your students to ask for clarification. But didn't you understand? One of the problems that's a cross-cultural problem is that people sometimes say, did you understand? Well, what, are you, what is the answer? Almost always, it's yes. Why? Because if I say no, I look stupid. So don't ask, do you understand? Find another way to find out if your students don't know. But encourage them to ask the question. Another thing is, this is a basic we're going to work on the rest of the time. And that is you need more planning. What does planning mean? Setting goals, doing task analysis, uh, making an action plan. Okay. Those are things we're going to work on. Okay. Help, help, help. <laughs> Okay, one more thing I want to bring to your attention. 
hopefully it'll make what we are talking about clearer. There are two things that we are teaching in a language classroom. One is something I call product. That is the language, the actual language and how it works. But if you want your students to succeed, you have to teach them them with some skills you can use to listen. Some ideas about what that is, but that I call process. So what does that mean for teaching listening? Focus on the process as well as the problem. Just teach the language. I'll make another comment here. At our uh, Service Institute, let me just admit her, uh, where we train our diplomats in the United States, um, it takes to learn Spanish to a level three, I guess, um, B2, C1, okay? It takes over 600 hours. 600 hours. Student has got, and the student still isn't at the highest level. You have got to help them know how to learn. They're the ones that are going to be using the light. Another thing that helps is about your exercise as if the teacher wasn't there, right? The teacher all, often in teaching listening. You, the teacher asks questions. No, the learner should ask questions. You know, how would you do it if the teacher wasn't there? How are you going to help yourself? So don't give your learners questions. That doesn't happen in real life. Okay, here's a very, very important reference to need. Uh, I'm sure you can get this one on Amazon, and these people have worked metacognition, which is self-reflection, self, okay, ah, okay. Take a picture if you like. Now we come to homework. I'm ahead of myself, but that's all right. Using one of your texts, and we'll talk about this in a minute, Write a lesson plan to incorporate teaching listening as a process. Uh, focus on facilitating your students' skills in listening by activating their background knowledge. All right. Now, remember, normal listening, people don't have a set of questions. Instead, try to develop their skills in anticipating and hypothesizing. Okay, now we need to go to Veronica, because what we have done is to divide you up mostly into groups of two, uh, but always every group has one, at least one person who is taught, and that's very important. The other thing to think about is if you don't aren't teaching now and you said that you are a teacher, Bring your textbooks, use your textbooks, or you know, find a way to share your textbooks. If it's a lesson, copy it and send it to your partner. And the two of you can work on teaching. Doesn't have to be a long lesson plan, but it has to incorporate. What does it need? It needs a piece of a material that they're going to listen to, and all activities you are going to. listening as a process. Any questions? As a question? Yes, Professor, I have a question. Have, uh, we are going to, uh, to use a class, uh, another platform to send you the, the, the homework? Oh. And the work? 
That's a good question. Marisol, uh, uh, have, have, yeah. you, Marisol yeah. can you answer that, please? Yes. Uh, right now, the PowerPoint, the PPT is in the in the classroom, but I, I will uh, set a Google Doc for you to answer the questions. Oh, okay. The only one thing is that I need the, oh, I mean, I need the pairing. I mean, which ones you're going to be working with. That's the one thing I need for you to, to have you working together. Okay, can you send the ID to join the cl the classroom and the the uh, the ID and the and the clue? I already, already sent it. No, no, uh, no. For, we uh, we have we have a. Uh, I I received the invitation by by email, but I have no I have no WhatsApp. I don't know. I don't know. I am am in the in the in the WhatsApp. If there are a WhatsApp group or another, I'm going to put in the chat my 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 cell number in order that you can add add for the WhatsApp. Yes, are you agree? Yeah, I agree, but I, I I have your phone number here and I sent you this morning. WhatsApp? Yeah, through WhatsApp. I sent you this morning the invitation to is, the classroom. Check, it's the first message that I sent you. This ah, morning. yes, diplo the diploma course. Is that one? Yeah. Ah, good afternoon, Alejandro. It is the okay, same module. It's because I have two groups, I have two. I'm in two seminars and believe that this one, the, the other one. Okay, can you uh, send the, the club to join to the, I don't know, the, the classroom? Click or is, in, is this one? Is click in the this link. One? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three, three. Yes, okay. Okay, okay, excellent. Sorry. Is I know a the where, where uh, they were. They were sent by email already to all uh, the yeah. other. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, okay. The other okay. thing I was saying ah, okay. is... Uh, that's okay, I was confused. Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm clear your... uh, right now, I'm clear, mm -hmm. sorry. Upload your lesson plan by tomorrow at noon, let's say. I probably won't look at it till tomorrow evening, but I need it uploaded and Veronica is going to divide you into groups so you know who your partner is at least for this one we may do it another way tomorrow but at least for this first assignment any questions about the assignment so this excuse me so this is going to be done I mean in the morning it's not going to be in the time seminar right no the seminar's time that's your homework my understanding, according to what I was yeah. told, uh, is that right. in the morning, you do, or whenever, in the middle of the night, if you like, but in the morning, you work with your partner, and for four hours, that's the way it's scheduled, and you upload it by noon. Okay. It could be in the morning or even in the evening tonight, if you want to. I'm going to be setting up the app. Google Docs. Do it. Work work. with your partner and find the time to work on this, okay? Just waiting for it. Uh, excuse me. So it will be with a partner. Okay. Veronica? I am I am going to mention the names of the groups, the part the, the participants for each group. Uh, so please write the, the information so that you can exchange contact. Group one is Javier and Daniela. Yes, group two, Adriana, Enelda, and Alejandra. Group three, Karen and Maria del Cid. Group four. Sorry. Do we have do I have two currents, two different currents, or is the same person? 
No, it's not the same person. Oh, okay. If, that's if what, that's yes, what, sir, that's sir. what the Dr. Oh, John was Karen. asking. Yes, there are two Karen. So it's not me, it's the other one. Karen Olson and Karen Arango. Yes, this is Karen also, I think. Me in another... That's why it's important to, to put a complete name. Yes. I, yes. I thought it was the same Karen. Yes. Okay, give me a second. Uh, so Karen Arango. Uh huh. And the other one is Karen what? Also. Karen also. O L S O L. Karen Olson. Okay. Okay. So. So for tomorrow, please put the. Uh, Name and surname so that we can know who, who is who. Um, I have my, my name and last name. I know. I, I have Karen Arango, but I thought it was the same Karen. Oh, sorry. And, and as, as when, when Dr. John uh, asked, nobody um, clarified that it was two different Karen. Yes. But because she asked. She said, oh, I see two Karen. <laughs> But nobody uh, clarified that it was different currents, not not. So we thought it was duplicated. Okay, don't worry. Uh, group three, then it will be Karen Arango and Maria Del C. Okay. Yes. It's right. Yes, right. Uh -huh. Group four, Ilka. And Isabella. Group, group five. Three. Group four. Group four, Ilka. 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 Uh -huh. And Isabella. Ilka or Ilka? Ilka. Ilka. Okay. Okay, Ilka. Okay. Ilka. I L K A. Ilka. Okay. And Isabella. Yes? Group. Group five, Osiris and Anna. Group six, Eileen and Indira. Group seven, uh, Celia and Aristides. Group eight, Hilda, Selfa, and Karen Olson. Anyhow, I'm going to share that information in the Zoom chat. Let me just um, update the group with the correction of the cuttings. Okay, is everybody in a group? First of all, is everybody in a group? Or was anyone left out? <laughs> Professora Maria del Cid, podría darme su teléfono para comunicar? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Oh, yes, one. I'm going to write on the okay. chat. Okay, gracias. Okay. Let me yes. see yes. group, 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 cutting arango. Cutting arango. Uh huh. And then I have group eight. I guess nobody responded that they are missing a group. So that means that everybody is in a group. Remember that that it is a requirement that you do your assignments for you to get your certificate, okay? Starting Olson. And starting Olson and Hilda and Selfa. Selfa. So, I repeat the names of the members of the group. I repeat the names of the members of the group. Javier and Daniela, group one. Adriana. Adriana, Eneta, and Aleanda, group two. Karen, Arango, and Maria del Cid, group three. Group Ilka and Isabella, group four. Osiris and Anna, group five. 
Aileen and Indira, group six. Celia and Aristides, group seven. Karen Olsen and I Karen Olsen, Hilda and Selfa, group eight. I'm going to share this information in the Zoom chat. Okay, okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you. You're you. welcome. Okay. Just just copying and sharing. Okay, chat. Paste. Okay. Let me know if you can see it. Yes, I can see the groups. Okay. Make sure that your name is in a group so that nobody stays out. I think we are we we have two groups with three people and all the others are all all the other six are two people. Yes. Isn't everyone confirming that you are in a group, that you have a partner? La Arango. Uh, Tell me. It says, esta otra Karen, creo con usted la Arango. Did I? Did, did I write it wrong? No, <laughs> usted la escribió bien, profe. You, re, you did it in the, in the correct way. Ah, okay. But who is but who is asking? It says La Arango. Ah, it says Karen Olson to everyone. It's La Otra Karen, creo con usted. And what happened is that you the... No, maybe, maybe, she, maybe she sends her to Professor Maria del Cis. Because ah. I, I said that please type my... Uh, that please type her phone number. Yes, okay. number. <laughs> I'm like... What's going on? Oh, sorry, what's happening is, is I, I'm on a bus now, so I'm trying to pay attention and chat at the same time. Sorry. Okay, Karen Arango, Hilda is looking for you. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good, good. Hilda. So, yeah, Hilda. Hilda is looking for you, it says. Hilda, no, eh, Hilda. Is with Karen Olson. Olson, okay, no okay. Linda, uh -huh, with Karen Olson and Selfa. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yes, please have make the link sure. The list that is over there in the chat, girls. Yeah, that please look make. at the list. Please Give look at the second. list. Um, I'm, I'm sending the classroom link in the chat room. So check it. There is a question. There it is. Do we have to upload the assignment individually or one of the group uploaded? I, I suggest that in, even though you are working in group, each one upload their assignment. Yeah, because it, if it's you just don't... one group, it's just one assignment, but each one upload their assignment. Yes, because it has to be registered in classroom. Mm hmm Okay. Any other question? Uh, yes, I have a question. Could you please repeat the part because I'm, I'm a student. I'm not a teacher, but uh, can you repeat the indications for the students? That's why, that's why a, a, in each group, there is a teacher. It, uh, probably one that is are uh, still working or one that has had experience. So no one, you should be, you should be with uh, Professor Ilka. So, so you should work along with her. She is the teacher and you are the student. No student is by themselves. 
or with another student. Everybody has a teacher that is working at the time or a teacher that has experience. Okay, some of you have not accepted the invitation to the classroom. Uh, let's see. Let me share the groups again because I see yeah. some people coming in. Give me a second. Yeah, you have the classroom link in the chat room right now. So please accept the invitation. Karen Arango, I don't see you here in the classroom. Hello. I don't see Hello. you in the classroom. Hi, Marisol, how are you? I am Hello. so sorry that I am on my way here traveling from Cherokee to Panama. So I have been in and out. And, and out. So sorry because of the connection. ¿Qué me cuentan? Ya, ya se terminó. Estamos en grupo todavía, ¿ok? <laughs> oh, Dios. Ay, Celia. <laughs> okay, we are dividing the groups right now. Uh, we are asking you to join the classroom, please. Is Celia in a group? Yes, she is with Aristides. Okay. Celia, you have not accepted the classroom invitation. It is in the chat room. I think you need to share that again because they, that's why I share the groups. Okay, again, there we go. Let's yeah, see. and I think if she has not signed up for the attendance, that needs to be shared again. Attendance. Let me share this again. There it is. Classroom link. Click on it. So, so we are in a small group here right now, or what? Yeah, we're, we're no. going to work in pairs for the for the assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about the assignment now? Yeah, we are talking about the assignment now, yes. But an assignment for right now or an assignment for assignment tomorrow? for tomorrow. That's for ah, tomorrow. Oh. And what is it? What, what do we have to do? Okay, it is in the PPT that is in the class. Hello, hello. <laughs> Professor, jo Professor Joanne, could you clarify about the assignment? Hello, hello. I am not in the group. Alexander Reyes is not in a group. Mm. Hello, hello. Well, yeah, hello, hello. Yeah. Give me a second because I, I didn't see your name before. So give me a second. Okay. Um, okay, you can work in group seven with Professor Celia, Aristides, and, and you, Alexander. Let me. Okay, the assignment. Let me clarify. Let me clear this. <laughs> group seven, yes. Okay. The assignment is in the last page. On the last page of the of your PPT that is already in classroom. Celia, Aristides, and Alexander. Anybody else that is not in a group? Where can I find the PPT? In classroom. In classroom. You need to join classroom. You need is to accept the invitation. Yeah. I, I, it is in the chat room right now. Ah, okay. The, the Zoom chat room, yeah. So, um, it is also in your email, Celia Mercedes, at gmail. Working group. Task, group one, Javier, Group two, Adriana, and Alejandra. Group three, Karen, and Remember that for you to be able to, to to be able to work? I don't see my... Will you listen to me? 
I don't see my name in any of in any of the groups. Yes, you are in group seven. Group seven, seven says Celia, ah, okay. Aristides, and Alexander. Okay. Aristides and Alexander. Okay. How can I contact them? Yeah. <laughs> You need to exchange numbers right here in the Zoom chat. Are you still? Okay, let me check. I will, I will. Did everyone uh, join classroom? Can you see Professor Marisol information of classroom? I don't see, let me see, let me check. Because I cannot see it. I cannot, I cannot see your message. Yeah, yeah. You have to accept the invitation too. To no, no, no. I, I thought you said you had shared it here in the, in the Zoom chat. No. I did. Yes, I did. But yours? But Yours no, 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 no. But I'm I'm talking about the Zoom link that you share for for everyone I here. It, yes, I sent it about three times already. Mm, for some reason, I cannot see it. Okay, let me let me share it again. That's why I was asking if everybody can see it. And um, hello, hello, self. Huh? Yes. Um. I don't see my name in the list of the uh, students in the Yes, class. you are in group yes. number eight with yes, Karen Olson, Hilda, and Selfa. Yes, I see my name there, but not in the in the classroom. Um, can there you are see only it now? a group of students. Yes, no, I can see classroom link. You need to touch the link to join classroom. Yes, I have done it twice. I click it join and. Uh, Let's see if I, I can see my name. Um, I can see but, you, Selfa. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I cannot see uh, Celia. I cannot see you. Celia. Remember to sign Celia up for Dan. your attendance. We cannot see you. Javier, I cannot see you. Professor. Yes, indeed. My computer, my camera computer is not working. Mm -hmm. Marisol, where do you want to see me? In classroom. In classroom. <laughs> yeah, Karen Arango, I cannot see you either in classroom. <laughs> what, what you mean google classroom google classroom yes google classroom yeah because i okay. the only way give for you to do the okay. assignment is through, is through google classroom okay okay yes give me mm -hmm. a and okay. that please that's okay. why you have the link there say hello okay hello yes Okay, I'm gonna touch uh, I, the button I, to, to get I, into I, the Amigo Google Classroom. I got in already, um, Miss. Sorry, who's speaking? Enelda, I I am in already. Enelda, let me see. Professor Enelda, can I you cannot please... see your name, Enelda. No, I'm ready. Let me I, refresh the page. I can see the uh the PowerPoint that yeah, I'm refreshing the page. Just give me a second. Okay, yeah, any in. other question? Yeah. You're, in. Anelda, Javier, you you're not in. Okay, who is calling me? Adriana. I just Adriana. Uh -huh, we have to work together. Okay, I'm just gonna, I was thinking it was. Adriana, Adriana Eneda, and Alejandra. 
Uh, Diana, three... you have not accepted the invitation? Mm, okay. Hernande, I'm just going to send my cell phone to the group chat. I just send it to Alejandra. Alejandra, I send you my cell phone to the group chat already. Okay. Yeah, the thing is that you send it to Adel, to uh, you send it to Alejandra, but you didn't send it for me to see to include to send it to send the okay. link to you. You see, I cannot send you the link if I cannot see your your telephone number. Okay. And, and remember, remember, you are working with Adriana and Alejandra. Okay, what lean? I I am in Google Classroom already. I can see the PowerPoint that was presented today. Okay, is that an Elda? Yes. Yeah, but I'm talking about Adriana. Adriana, you are not in Google Classroom. I I I can see the same as she mentioned. I can see the PowerPoint. I can see okay. the post. Let me refresh the page then. Marisol, what is the code number for Google Classroom? Again. Where can I'll... I find it? Okay, again. She sent the link to the to the WhatsApp to the chat. No, it, it is it is in the chat room. It is in the chat room of, of Zoom. It is in Zoom. Can you see it there? But anyway, I'm going to send it to your telephone number. Okay, it is in your phone number. We have a classroom. The Zoom chat room, you have the classroom link. So please join. <laughs> no, I don't know what to do. I'm so sorry. Okay, Karen, I'm going to put this in. Uh, have in you been chat room, it's not in? So if I, I have Google Classroom in my phone, I am in the phone. So I if I enter my phone, I will have to to put the code number. You said that you sent it to me. What is it? What yes. is it? In your cell phone. It is in, in your cell phone. In, 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 the, um, in, in WhatsApp? In your WhatsApp, yes. OK, let me check. Give me a second. I have to answer a call. Give me a moment, please. Uh, Marisol module mm -hmm. in uh -huh. okay. Elige una cuenta. Okay. Ya, yeah. eh, Marisol. Where are you? All right. Okay, uh, let's see, let me check. Well, Celia, I sent you the invitation to email. And Marisol, Marisol. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. you sent me that, I, I enter 
Google Classroom, I, the only thing I see is my courses. It asked me to, to join with one of my accounts. I enter with the one I use and it only, I, I only see my classes. Maybe do, uh, do I have to enter with the account that I sent previously to the chat or what? I don't sorry, know. sorry, my, my dog I can't is... see anything uh, more than my classes. My groups that I because I use it right now. So, uh, what I'm supposed to do? What do I have to do right now? The link that I send you is is the classroom that we are using right now. Is that for the? Is that for the, the homework for tomorrow? Yeah, that's for tomorrow's assignment. Okay, I will check yeah. it up in a yeah. while with my computer. Okay. Yes, stay with your computer, and uh, um, I'm going to be setting up the the Google Docs with your names, so that you will be able to do your assignment. Okay. All right. Okay, and I will have to communicate with the two guys that you mentioned. I I wrote yes. in the yes. Did you the get chat. the phone numbers? I asked their phone numbers. They gave them to me. Okay. All right. Did they give it to you? The only thing I can't read here in the do you hear me, Marisol? Yeah. I s I can read here the the, the Ilka Rikel me. Can we leave the meeting to start working in our assignment? That's the only thing I see here. I guess uh, we have had to we have to ask Professor Ruben. Javier has not accepted the invitation yet. Let's see. Javier, 